Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Hi everyone, welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. This is Catherine doing my first opening. Yay, good job Catherine. Why thank you. And sitting next to me is Rachel. How you doing Rachel? I'm good. Good. And uh, guess where we're going today? You don't know? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of do. You kind of do. I'll pretend like I don't. Oh, okay. Where are we going, Catherine? <laughs> well, we're going to Cape Town. I feel like I'm on a roll because, you know, this last couple of weeks we've been doing places that I've been, and this is another one of them. It has a very long history. It was uh, settled by the Europeans in the 1600s, but of course, Africans were there much uh, longer than that. And it's a, it's a very interesting place because a lot of times, you know, people have this image in their head of what Africa is gonna look like or what they think it will look like. And mm -hmm. Cape Town actually, you know, resembles more of a European looking city than what you imagine a typical African city would look like. It was the first established town in South Africa. Yeah. And that may be why it's sometimes called the mother city. Um, there are different theories about that. Probably the most logical is that Dutch explorers founded the first European colony. Cape Town is actually on the Cape Peninsula, and at the bottom of that is the Cape of Good Hope. It was originally called the Cape of Storms because it's very rough around there. The, the water is just extremely rough. The name was changed later on um, and called the Cape of Good Hope because it took Europeans around to India. So it was a new route to get to India. So it was very optimistic that they were thinking at the time. One thing I thought was really interesting about Cape Town is that it's a very outdoorsy place, mm -hmm. like sporty. I mean, you can do, and, and not just your average sports, but like adrenaline junkie daredevil yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. So it's a big surf spot. You can do regular surfing. They have lots of great surf beaches. Um, but you can also do uh, kite surfing, mm. which is basically what it sounds like, um, like surfing with a kite. And there's also something called kloofing which is canyoning where you kind of go down a, a canyon or a ravine by whatever means necessary. But apparently in South Africa, they call it kloofing. Wow. So they've got their own term for it. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of those kind of sports there. Uh, I can't say that I tried any of them, but- No, uh, not no. an extreme uh, <laughs> no. sports enthusiast, Catherine? No, we did get to the beach though. We went to Boulder's Beach, but what's famous about that is the penguins. They have an enormous colony of penguins, uh, started from just two breeding pairs in 1982. Now they have about uh, uh, 3,000 penguins there. All right, well, shifting from cute little animals <laughs> to giant mountains, it's a nice, <laughs> nice smooth, smooth segue there. Very smooth. But uh, so we're going to talk about Table Mountain. You really can't miss this mountain because no. it's smack dab in the middle of the city. And it's part of um, Table Mountain National Park, which in fact, I was surprised to read, uh, actually encompasses about 75% of the whole peninsula. Yeah. So it's a big park. Oh, definitely. But the mountain is um, 3,500 feet tall mm -hmm. and it has this flat top, which is where it gets its name. And it's also supposed to have some, some pretty nice uh, hiking opportunities. Yeah, you can uh, hike up there. There's also a cable car that you can take to the top, which is what most people do. But those who feel energetic, it's a few hours of hiking to the top. And then when you get up there, there's a fabulous view of the city and, um, you know, the ocean and everything. So it's a great spot to see. So, um, and after Table Mountain, uh, one other thing that we did do when I was in Cape Town was go to Robin Island, which is off the coast of Cape Town. And uh, it's about a, a half hour uh, by ferry. It was originally a place that they used to keep uh, lepers. It was a leper colony there. And then later on, it became a place where they put uh, political prisoners. And the most famous political prisoner who was there was Nelson Mandela. And uh, he was there for about 21 years. And after he was released and after apartheid ended, you know, they turned it into a museum. So you can now go there and see the buildings, see the prison, see where he was uh, kept and where other political prisoners were kept. In fact, the guides are former political prisoners who do a lot of the tours. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. And in fact, I, I was reading too that some of the ex wardens are even still there and they're as um, staff members and stuff. So it's kind of an interesting coexistence they have going on there. Well, you know, if you'd like to learn more about uh, South Africa or Cape Town, we have a couple of articles on our How Stuff Works website, and there's also an article on Nelson Mandela. So uh, until next time, we'll see you on the coolest stuff on the planet. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com and let us know what you think. 
email travel podcast at howstuffworks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes. <laughs>